Did I just buy one series from an author from whom I've never read before? No. No. That would be the reasonable, logical thing to do. Did I do that? No. Hello lovely reader friends, it's Alora. Welcome to another video. Today I am going to be sharing with you all of the books, actually not all of the books, I'm going to be sharing with you half of the books that I bought at the end of December and throughout January. So I went a little bit crazy in January. What happened is everybody was putting out their best books of 2020 lists and so I just kind of bought a few from lots of people's lists and I ended up with a mountain. And then I've also had some book depository uh, orders come in that I ordered back in November. The reason why I'm calling this a last hurrah book haul is because I am making a big life change that's going to require me to kind of cut back on some of my discretionary spending. In addition to that, I have a goal this year of reading 70% of the books that I buy in the year. So I really need to kind of pare it back and calm down a little bit. Um, my goal moving forward is to only buy between four and five books a month. With all that being said, let's get into the book that I bought throughout the last month or so. So I'm going to try to switch up the genres so that if you prefer one or the other you kind of see a mix. Um, the first book that I want to talk about is The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. I have heard so much about Sophie Anderson specifically from like Gavin's channel, Lexi, Kaylin. They just have nothing but wonderful things to say about Sophie Anderson. It sounds like her writing is really fairy tale esque steeped in actual folklore. Uh, this follows a young girl who is set to take on, I believe, the job of Baba Yaga. So I think that it's based around Russian folklore. Part of that story is that Baba Yaga lives in a house with chicken legs. And the cover of this one is very, I would say, almost like stop motion, like Coraline-esque is kind of how I'm thinking about it. So at the start of the book, the main character, Marinka, really just wants to be more normal. She wants to have human friends, but she is set to take on the role of her grandmother, Baba Yaga, who kind of ferries souls to the afterlife. But Marinka doesn't want anything to do with this. And so that's how we begin our story. I hear that it's really whimsical and I can't wait to read it which goes without saying. The next one is switching it up a little bit. We have Exciting Times by Naosi Dolan. Now, what I've heard about this one is that it's similar to or for fans of Normal People by Sally Rooney. I read Normal People a few years back. I have a review of it actually on this channel and I really, really liked it. There was something about it that definitely spoke to me. This is also an Irish author. There is queer representation in this and it is about a millennial and kind of just making her way through her early 20s with her relationships, with her career, trying to figure everything out. So I'm looking forward to reading this one really, really soon. Again, I need to stop saying that. <laughs> Let's go with a nonfiction. I picked up Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability, and Making Space by Amanda LaDuke. This book was talked about a lot on BookTube last year, specifically on Kayla's channel. I really love fairy tales and there's something that just really speaks to my soul, but this is a critique on how fairy tales deal with characters who have disabilities. And I'm really looking forward to getting this different perspective. Typically, I don't enjoy books that are critiquing things. However, this one sounds really poignant and like it will provide me with an alternative perspective that might be really necessary for me. Keeping with the fairy tale theme, we have The Turnip Princess and Other Newly Discovered Fairy Tales by Franz Xavier von Schoenwerth. I don't think that he wrote these. I'm pretty sure that what happened is this author compiled all of these tiny little fairy tales that were found as manuscripts in a box in this person's attic. And they're all from the time of Hans Christian Andersen, the Grimm brothers, etc. But they are all very, very short. And I'm looking forward to reading some. I've read one, but I can't wait to pick up more. But I'm planning on reading this throughout the next few months, just maybe one or two stories a day. Next, I want to talk about a fantasy series that has been really making the rounds on booktube this year, and that is the Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. The first book is The Assassin's Apprentice. I ordered this edition off Book Depository because I think the UK covers are far superior to the US ones, just in my personal opinion and for my taste. And so this book follows Fitz, who is a young boy, I believe he is a bastard son, of a king. Being a bastard son, he's kind of in this position where he can't 
be seen at court. He can't be part of the royal family, but he also can't just be a commoner. And so the role in society that his father finds for him is to become an assassin. So I didn't just pick up the first book. <laughs> no, that would be silly. I picked up the second book so that I'm all prepared. And then I also, you know, I picked up the third one. <laughs> Robin Hobb is actually an Alaskan author, which is a really fun fact. She lives in Kodiak, on Kodiak Island, which is a little bit far away from me, but still really interesting to know. Makes me feel like all things are possible, you know? <laughs> Did I just buy one series from an author from whom I've never read before? No. No, that would be the reasonable, logical thing to do. Did I do that? No. Which means that what I also did was I bought Ship of Magic, which is book one of the Live Ship Traders trilogy. This one is kind of in the same world as the Farseer trilogy, and I think that you don't have to read it after the Farseer trilogy, but it's better if you do because you'll pick up on some character connections. And then of course I also got the second and third one. These editions are just lovely. I can't wait to display them prominently on my new bookshelves coming soon. From everything I've heard about the Live Ship Trader trilogy, it's even better than the Farseer trilogy. It's super emotional and the character development is supposedly phenomenal. So this series actually interests me a lot more than the first one, but I am going to read them in the order that they were published. The next book is a translated short modern classic from a Brazilian author, Clarice Lispector. This book was originally written in Portuguese and is kind of an examination or an introspective reflection on life and the theme of the instant or the present. I have started this. The language is really interesting. The way that she puts her words together is super unique and eloquent, unlike my use of the word super just then. And then I'm gonna wrap us off with two, wrap us off, that sounds weird. I'm going to wrap us up, wrap it up. We're gonna move on from this. I'm going to finish this off. This also sounds bad. <laughs> All right, guys, the, the last two books go together. One is the Iliad obviously by Homer, but this is the new Peter Green translation. I have read the Iliad before for school, but it's been, gosh, I read it in one of my first college English courses. It's been a long time, many a year has gone by. And so I'm looking forward to diving back into this. I hear really wonderful things about this translation. And to go along with that, I also have the Odyssey by Homer, and this is the Emily Wilson translation, which is also a new translation that's supposed to be very accessible, very readable. This is a story I have never read before, so I just can't wait. Plus the cover is absolutely brilliant. It's phenomenal. And there's a little owl. Okay, friends, thanks for watching this part one. I will fill you in with a part two once the rest of the books arrive in the mail. Let me know what book you've recently purchased that you're excited to read next. And until next time, I am sending you all the love.